Hello everyone, welcome to Dental Education Hub YouTube channel. Today we are going to discuss the morphology of the deciduous mandibular central incisor. So in this session what we are going to discuss, we are going to discuss the chronology or the timeline of development of the mandibular deciduous central incisors. We are going to discuss the number of this tooth and various tooth notation systems and we will discuss the landmarks that are present on the deciduous mandibular central incisor. So watch this video till the end. The mandibular central incisor, the calcification, it begins around the age of 14 weeks in utero. Why it is important to remember these age, ages from the clinical point of view and from the forensics point of view, for example, to estimate the age of the fetus. The enamel completion it occurs around the age of two and a half months and the tooth it emerge into the oral cavity around the age of eight months so it varies from six to ten months and the average is eight months the root it is completed around the age of 1.5 years and this tooth is lost by the process of exfoliation around the age of five to six years and around the age of six years this to the mandibular deciduous central incisor it is replaced by the permanent mandibular central incisor this tooth it remain in function for around five years what is the number of this tooth in various tooth notation systems so in the universal numbering system the alphabet it the for the primary dentition the alphabet it begins with a for right maxillary for a smaller and in a clockwise direction it continues so for the mandibular central incisors the number for the right for the left mandibular central incisor is o the alphabet is o and for the right mandibular central incisor the alphabet is p in the palmar notation system the alphabet it begins from the midline till the second molar uh, in each quadrant. The only difference is the symbol. This symbol it indicates that it is a mandibular right quadrant and the alphabet it is A for the right quadrant. For the left quadrant, this is a symbol for the left quadrant and again the number is A. Now, in the FDI notation system, uh, FDI is also known as the two-digit di system, and the difference is the first alphabet, the first digit, it indicates the quadrant, and the second digit, it indicates the tooth number. For example, the seven, it indicates that it is a mandibular left quadrant, and one indicate that this is the tooth number in deciduous teeth. So 7-1 means mandibular inc uh, deciduous incisor of the central incisor of the left side. Same over here, the 8, 8 indicate that it is a mandibular right quadrant. And 1 indicate that this is a tooth number of the mandibular central incisor. So for the deciduous right mandibular central incisor, the number is 8-1. What are the important landmarks from the that are present on the labial surface of deciduous mandibular central incisor? So unlike the permanent incisors that in on in the deciduous incisor, uh, there is no developmental groove. So in the deciduous incisor in the permanent incisors on the labial surface, there are some developmental grooves are there. So in the deciduous central incisors uh, or in the deciduous incisors no such developmental grooves are present the mesial and the distal surfaces of the crown this is the mesial surface and this is a distal surface so both surfaces they are evenly tapered and the tooth it, that's why the tooth it appear very symmetrical the crowns of the deciduous incisors they are wider in proportion to the length though the length is more but uh, in general the crown is wide as well uh, in proportion to its length 
the root it is long and it is also the root is also evenly tapered and it is of twice of the length of the crown so it is two times the length of the crown so now study the tooth from the lingual aspect so the marginal ridges they can be easily located for example this this is the marginal though they are not very well developed as compared to the permanent counterparts so this is the mesial marginal ridge and this is the distal marginal ridge and this part is the cingulum between these uh, raised slightly raised surfaces there is a concavity over here and this concavity slight concavity it is known as the lingual fossa so if we divide the tooth surface uh, the crown surfaces into three parts so this is the incisal surface incisal third this one is the middle third and this is the cervical third part of the of the crown so the incisal and the middle third part it is it is it, it is flattened so it is not very raised area it is flat with 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 little development of the marginal ridges while the cervical area it is convex the crown and the root surfaces so the crown and the root they converge towards the lingual side so you can see the part of the mesial side and part of the distal surface now the mesial aspect this is the incisal ridge and this incisal ridge it is centered over the center of the root or over the root apex so it is in line with the root apex the incisal ridge it is in line with the root apex so the cervical third of the crown this portion is the cervical third of the crown so the cervical third of the crown the convexity it is pronounced so it is very prominent so this is a mesial surface of the root it is almost flat with no developmental grooves or depression and it is evenly tapered so you can see the taper of the root that it is evenly tapered towards the apex because this tooth is very symmetrical so there are very few differences uh, between the mesial and the distal side except that the cervical line it is less it has a less curvature towards the distal side so this is a curvature of the cervical line and it is less towards the distal side a developmental depression uh, a slight developmental depression it is present on the root surface in this area on the distal side so from the incisal aspect the incisal ridge it is straight and you can see over here this is the incisal ridge incisal ridge it is straight and if you draw a line labiolingually so this incisal ridge forms a straight line and it forms a 90 degree angle so this is not in the case of the mandibular deciduous lateral incisor it forms nearly a 90 degree angle a taper it is evident towards the lingual side towards the cingulum there is a taper of the crown the labial surface is flat with no developmental grooves but there is a slight convexity labiolingually in general the lingual surface it it presents as a flat surface because of less development of the marginal ridges and the cingulum but in between these raised areas, in between the mesial marginal, distal marginal ridge, and a single limb, there is a concavity. And this concavity is known as the lingual fossa. So thank you very much for watching this uh, lecture. If you like this video, please give a thumbs up and, thank, and do give us your feedback in the comments. So thank you very much for watching and stay blessed.